It's been months. Okay. Don't fucking laugh at me. Why? <laughs> Why? I can do it. It's so Hi, funny. This is our YouTube video. What's it called? Carly LaCroix. <laughs> Just so <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly LaCroix and today I have a special guest, <laughs> Alana, and we're gonna be answering some of your genetic counseling questions. So let's get started. Okay, yeah, hi, I'm Alana. Um, I work with Carly, we are both genetic counselors, so we, she's had some questions come in, so we figured it would be fun to just answer the questions from Central Park. So since we work <laughs> in New York City, we're like, let's just have a fun Saturday and come into the park and answer some questions. First question is, is there a good work-life balance being a genetic counselor? So, <laughs> It definitely depends on your job. I would say for majority of jobs, maybe not ours, <laughs> there is a work-life balance. I would say I agree with that. You have to like just stop at a certain point. Like right. I'm the type of person where I'm just like, yesterday I just literally closed my computer, didn't look back, <laughs> and then Carly and I went to dinner. Yeah, you need that balance or else you'll go crazy. It is hard, but it is manageable and yeah. you have to just know when for your own sanity that you need to just like stop working and there i'm not like i'm not saying there's not days where i'm working until like one o'clock in the morning right but it's like you can do it you can make it work work life balance is difficult but depends on your job depends on your specialty yeah. and it depends on your personality and if you're able to make that separation and kind of just be like i'm done working now but with covid i think with every job it's harder Right, working from home has been yeah. Um, okay, and someone else asked, is there the flexibility to travel outside of work? So, mm -hmm. it depends Sorry. on your job again. Yeah. If you're working from home primarily, you can work from anywhere. So, travel and yeah. still get your work done. If you're in the office, it's a little bit hard, but I'm sure you have the same amount of vacation days as any other job where you can travel. Yeah. And take vacation. Yeah, I mean, like, exactly, like every job has pto and has vacation days has sick days whatever and yeah you can obviously like take time off it's not like a 24 7 yeah. job with working from home yeah you can kind of work from everywhere so like recently i was in la and i was still working from la for a couple of days i did take off some days to like not be working but i did work a couple of days there and it was fine my admin days yeah. whatever but like when you're seeing patients in person obviously you can't be <laughs> traveling <laughs> But there is flexibility. I think that now with COVID, like I think that things have changed and they will not go back to what they once were. I think that we now realize that like we can see patients from home. We can right. do our work from home. There's no need to sit in the office on a day that you don't see patients and like do your clinic notes when you can do them from home. Like yeah. So I think that there is more flexibility now. That is something that kind of came from COVID that I don't right. think was something that was really a thing before. But at any other job i'm sure it could have been different but just with our job we now realize that we have more flexibility which is nice as long as you're doing your job no one's going to Wonder, ask you yeah. too many questions yeah, and like, like yeah get your work done and that's about it someone else said what classes do i need to take in order to be applying to genetic counseling school um, so yeah, off the top of my head i can't yeah. give you an exact list but if you check several genetic counseling program websites they'll have a list of prerequisite classes that you have to take and usually they're all the same it's usually like a biology class chemistry genetics psychology so i would just check several of those to make sure that you're capturing all of the classes that they need yeah. um, it depends on the school so yeah, yeah if you know that you want to go to a specific school definitely look at that school and see what their specific prerequisites are because some schools require like embryology some schools don't some schools require biostatistics some schools don't right you need to make sure that you have those prerequisites because you can't apply to a school if you don't have the prerequisites like at the end no of the day man. like you need to make sure that you have those classes some classes can be finished after mm -hmm. um match day even like as long as you say you're enrolled in them yeah some schools are more flexible than others are really different you don't need to major in a science right like major like if you want to do communications or if you want to do history or whatever as long as you have those prereqs it doesn't matter and a lot of schools do like to see that you have like 
yeah. variety. Like, you're not the typical, like, science girl or science guy that, like, has been doing science forever. As long as you have the classes, you're exactly. good to go. As long as yeah. you have the prereqs. It makes it easier if you're a science major because you're taking those classes yeah, you're doing anyway. It anyway. But, like, yeah. you could technically major in anything. But, like Alana was saying, I would just say to check the websites because one program may require this class, one program may require this class. If you check several websites, you'll make sure that you're covering yeah. everything that you need to cover. Yeah, really, if you don't have them, there's no can. Yeah, point th they're going to throw out your application. Yeah. Right. Because they're prerequisites for right. the school. Like, for example, I applied and took embryology after I was accepted. So, like, I oh, took it before yeah. entering grad school and I just had to show them that I was enrolled exactly. and that I was planning on taking that class. As long so, as you show them. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Someone yeah. else asked... How did you find a mentor? I can't speak to this because I didn't have a mentor, <laughs> but I think Carly can. So I found my mentor in a really weird way. In my major, so I majored in biology, biochemistry, and bioinformatics at did my you? school. Yeah. All three? Yeah. <laughs> well, you I are. did. And we had to take like a bioethics class. And it just so happens that the professor for that class was a genetic counselor and not only a genetic counselor, but the program director for a genetic counseling program. Oh, yeah. So I went up to her and I was like, I'm interested in your job. Like, I don't know what this is. And she let me shadow her. I literally saw patients with her. She walked me through the entire application process. She read my personal statement. She helped me with interviews. It was just really random and so that's how i found my mentor if you're looking for a mentor i would recommend are you asking me yeah oh. i'm like maybe looking at the nsgc website there's a way to find genetic counselors that are open to student contact mm -hmm. um other than that i don't really know like, i get a million messages on linkedin <laughs> all the time that yeah um, linkedin yeah, I would say LinkedIn, I guess NSGC. I okay. had to message at least 20 oh my God. genetic counselors in my area to find someone, to find two to shadow. Yeah. So out of 20, two of them responded saying that I could shadow yeah. them for like one day. So yeah. you have to contact it's a lot of people. Yeah, it's definitely, also because like we're so busy. Yeah. That like if I see a message from LinkedIn, I'm just like, I don't have time to answer exactly. this right now, whatever. But I think that like if you reach out to enough people, I'm sure that someone will be willing to help you out is the salary good <laughs> so i would say yes I would say depending yes, on yes. where you live as well so like in new york city and la you're gonna make more than you would in like yeah, idaho I yeah. or like, i don't even know a yeah. random middle state but it also depends on the specialty so i would encourage you to look up like what is the average salary of a genetic counselor in my area and then you'll get a better grasp of what you can make graduating from school yeah so i don't know is this like public information the pss or no okay so there's a survey that johnny counselors fill out i think every year yeah where we kind of say like where we live what our salary is and it's kind of it, it's helpful to kind of have this information because over time like when you're applying for a new job you can say well i know that in this state mm -hmm. with my level of experience in this specialty i should be receiving a hundred thousand dollars and like you can say that kind of at your job interviews i think that it depends on yeah as carly said like the place the specialty yeah typically non-direct <laughs> patient facing roles typically pay more but it really does depend on the company and the hospital specialty right if you're in a lab it might be more than working at like a large university hospital exactly. or anything like that it, it really just depends. Yes, like we are able to live comfortably in and like City. in New York City. Yeah, like independent from our parents or anyone else. Yeah. Like, and we don't have to worry about like going out to eat or doing it. Like, it's like we can easily pay for yeah, our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's nothing that you need to worry about. Right. So I would say, yes, the salary is good, especially like being a young professional. Like, I would say I'm not worried. I'm not worried yeah. <laughs> So if that means anything to you. That's how we feel. <laughs> School is expensive, but you'll you, make your money yeah, back and yeah. you'll be okay. And I think we're going to answer one more question. Okay. Yeah. So how many schools did we apply to? So I was told by my mentor that I need to apply to a decent amount of schools because my GPA wasn't the best. Also, my GRE wasn't the best. So I applied to eight programs. I got wow. interviews. Yeah, I got interviews at four programs. And then I was waitlisted at three. 
and then I was accepted to one. So I went to the program that I was accepted to, but we were the last year before the match program, which yeah. is a whole, a whole different, different situation, situation yeah. now. So I was the same year as Carly, and so we, I applied to three schools because I knew I wasn't leaving New York. So I applied to the three schools in New York at the time were um, Sarah Lawrence, Mount Sinai, and LIU. Um, and so I applied to three, I got one interview and was accepted to one school obviously so i think that it really depends like i it depends on what you want if you're open to moving and like doing something new then like apply to schools outside of your area i just knew at the time i was not interested in leaving new york city so i didn't apply outside of the city but i can speak to how i said my friend um was just applying to schools and just ended up getting matched so the match system is something that like was after our time because it's our <laughs> old so basically he applied to schools in new york and in los angeles and so with the match it's i'm still honestly confused about it because i, I was it, like honestly. i don't get it either but as long as you put them on your list school ranks you and then you rank the school and then if you like you have to put it in order of where you'd want to go and yeah. if you don't want to go there don't rank it because you can end up there and my friend ended up like he ranked his last school he ended up being matched with his last ranked yeah. school so you need to be sure that if you're ranking a school you would go there because i think it's legally binding like yeah. you have to go yeah. definitely do your research it depends on this like the city is important and if you don't care and if you're down to move to like wherever then like apply to a bunch of different schools right. if you have nothing tying you down there's no other time in your life where you have two years to go move somewhere like maybe random but like you're gonna meet some of your best friends in school you'll be there for two years and you'll have a great time so it's like you'll be fine regardless of anything else that you would add no i don't have anything else to add but thank you so much for watching our video if you have Thanks. any other questions feel free to put them down below and we'll try to make a video we make another, not yeah. three months from now <laughs> hopping to your questions yeah. thank you so much all bye. right bye, bye. It's not a game. It's a